Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Broadway Baptist Church. Welcome to everyone who is in the room uh, and to those who are with us online as well. It's great to have you with us. Um, I, I'm picking it up that we've got um, a number of visitors with us here this morning. Um, so welcome. Hope you feel at home among us. Hope you feel encouraged. We hope you encounter the risen Lord Jesus among us uh, as we worship. One or two uh, pieces of church family news just right at the start uh, and, uh, and something to pray for. Uh, this week, um, Irene Turner passed away. Um, Irene Turner will be known to several of the, uh, the longer term members of, uh, of Broadway uh, and uh, she died this week. And we know, we know that Irene, um, in lots of ways, I think, was ready to go, um, and uh, her hope was always in the Lord Jesus. We don't yet have any funeral details. Um, we'll let you know as and when we get these. Um, so we'll pray for that in a moment. Um, also, um, Ray, Ray Harold's sister, Geraldine, is um, in hospital in South Africa uh, with COVID. She's in a COVID ward. Um, and the situation is quite serious. And we're going to pray now, but I'd like to um, encourage you just to, uh, to hold Ger Geraldine before the Lord um, as, you, uh, as you go from here as well. Let's take a moment to pray for these things. Loving Lord, we, we thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. And thank you that that... That is a hope for every moment, every season of life. That's a hope that is there in the, uh, in the times when life is going well. It's there in the times when life is at its very hardest. It's there in the face of death because our hope in Jesus goes beyond death. And so we thank you for Irene and we thank you for her, her life. Um, thank you for her faith in you. And thank you that, that now that um, her hope meets reality as she finds her, uh, her rest and her joy in the presence of Jesus. And as one day she will be resurrected um, with a new body to join the community of your redeemed people. So we thank you for Irene and for every precious memory of her. And we pray now particularly for Geraldine um, in, in the difficult situation that she's in, in that COVID ward in South Africa. And Lord, we reach out to her with our, our prayers and we ask you that you would touch her. Lord, will you put your healing hand upon her and will you provide for her every need? May she know your presence, your comfort, your love surrounding her. Um, may she be able to uh, breathe well and make good recovery. Um, we pray for Ray and for the family and, and ask you that, uh, that you will give them peace, that you will give them strength in this difficult time as well. Lord, we look to you because you are the source of all hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll pray again briefly in a moment, but uh, I, want to, I want to read just a couple of verses from Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 52, and the words say, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. Listen. Your watchmen lift up their voices together. They shout for joy. Your God reigns. The uh, strap line for, uh, for Broadway Baptist Church is a community living to make Jesus known. Um, and th these verses just talk about the, uh, how wonderful it is when people do that, when people share good news. Um, and as a community of God's people, we want to make people, we want, we want to make Jesus known both in words and in deeds. 
Um, and we want to do that on the island, and we also want to do that um, around the world. And um, uh, one, one of our partner missions that has been very central to, uh, to the life of Broadway is, uh, is Do Developing Orphans, um, headed by, uh, by Pat Wiles um, and the team. Um, and this morning's worship service is going to be a little bit different because um, it's going to be focused entirely um, on Do Developing Orphans. I'm going to head over to, uh, hand over to Pat in, and the team uh, in a moment um, as we, as we uh, both celebrate and consider what it means for us to partner in mission in God's world, to be people who bring good news, both here and in Uganda. So let's just commit our time together to God. Loving Lord, we thank you that you are here by your Holy Spirit. And we ask you that you would lift our hearts up to you, that we would be uh, ready to, to worship you, to lean into you, to give you our whole attention. May we hear tonight, to, the, tonight's not been a long day yet, may we hear today everything uh, that, uh, that you would have for us. Um, may we be encouraged, inspired, challenged, um, and drawn into your mission of bringing good news, proclaiming your peace, bringing good tidings, proclaiming salvation, and declaring that our God reigns. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so Chris is on the committee of Do Developing Orphans, and uh, Chris and the band are going to be leading us in our worship this morning. So over to you. Thank you. Um, if you please stand as we sing our first song, it's, uh, Forever Rain.
at this point. Mini Biff are going to go downstairs. If you don't know where that is, it's through the glass doors at the back and then through the door. And it's for two to five year olds. I think. Yes. Good morning, everyone at Broadway. God is good, and all the time, God is good. We are together to praise and glorify God in a service of thanksgiving for, the, for God's work through Do Developing Orphans. We're a small voluntary charity from the Isle of Man, working with orphans in northern Uganda. Today we're thanking God for his grace, mercy and favour over many years in restoring and renewing the lives of the do orphans. As Paul said in Corinthians, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. I want, you to, I want to encourage you to grab hold of God's promises in the Bible because I can testify he delivers on his promises. As it says in Hebrews, for the word of God is alive and active. In Jeremiah, God says, the Lord God declares he has plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. No matter how far you are from everywhere and anywhere, God is there. Always. Remember that. Uganda in Africa is one of the poorest countries in the world. The people living in extreme poverty, which is not the same poverty as not having the latest trainers or mobile phone. This is the poverty of destitution, having nothing. Do works in two rural locations, Paddy Bay and Akobe, in one of the most remote parts of Uganda on the border with South Sudan a 12-hour journey from the capital, Kampala. In this rural location, the extreme poverty is compounded by the aftermath of the long-running civil war with the Lord's Resistance Army and weather impacted by climate change. The Lord's Resistance Army, a rebel army, terrorised its own people for more than 20 years in northern Uganda, killing tens of thousands, abducting children to be sex slaves or child soldiers, torturing, setting fire to villages, forcing survivors to kill each other. The leaders, including Joseph Kony, were named in 2005 by the International Criminal Court as the top five most wanted men in the world. The people of northern Uganda were forced to move into internally displaced person camps, IDP camps, for their safety. Formerly prosperous rural farmers, they, came be they became dependent on the vagaries of food, aid, and were often without a water source. Traditional houses were built one on top of the other, creating extremely unhealthy uh, living conditions. Malnutrition exacerbated diseases spreading rapidly, decimating the IDP camp populations. The first time I went to an IDP camp, I really, really thought I had died and gone to hell. 
It was unbelievable. The smoke from the wood fires, the broken down mud homes, the rags, which turned out to be muddied human beings looking gaunt and bloated at the same time, matted hair. Often, there were thatch roof house fires taking away what little shelter the people had. It had been a forgotten war, mostly not even reported. Jan Egerland of the United Nations said this conflict was characterised by a level of cru cruelty seldom seen elsewhere. Chopped, burnt, starved. The torture of faces and hands chopped off. The boy badly burnt when the LRA set fire, his home on fire. His neck fused with his chest and his hands burnt useless. The toddler so malnourished he would die. The UN said the world cannot and should not abandon them. But guess what? When the war ended, young children made orphans in the war, were thrown out of the camps with nothing but their malnutrition, rags and their siblings, trying to find their former family home. For Ayu Betty and her sisters, all that was left was this old goat shed. They cried out to God. As Psalm 34 says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Do's 193 orphans cried out to God. He heard them. He was not abandoning them. He already had the plan. Many people were approached in Uganda who were on the ground in the war. But they were unwilling to help the orphans, the orphan children in the aftermath of war. Just as in the story of the Good Samaritan, the orphan children were passed by, by the people and the organizations you would expect to care, but not by God. He called on a small group of his servants, people living on a small island six and a half thousand miles away and miles away from Uganda, to take these orphans into their hearts and show them his love. I'd now like to welcome Doreen, who's a supporter of Do, who's from Uganda originally, living on the Isle of Man. She's brought her beautiful family with her today, but she's here to pray to God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Abba Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together today and for keeping us safe through the night. We thank you for do developing orphans and the young people whose lives have been transformed through our charity. Our young people have experienced so much pain and upheaval but you are the God of hope and miracles. And through the loving kindness of others, they have hope for a better world. These young lives are beautifully and wonderfully made and are called to know you, to love you, and to serve you. We thank you for bringing them into our lives, Father. We thank you for our benefactors and trustees, for their generosity, their kindness, their unwavering spirit to make a difference. Father, give us the grace to continue to bring your light and hope to these young people. We also thank you, Father, for our beautiful country, Uganda, the pearl of Africa, and its vibrant and joyful people. We thank you for the abundant blessings and graces and masses 
you've bestowed upon her. We particularly bring you our young men and women in Uganda facing unimaginable challenges and whose hopes are dashed due to immense poverty and lack of opportunities. We are also entering election time and we pray for peace and dialogue. Let there be peace and meaningful change for all. We pray for the right leadership to bring all Ugandans together in these very difficult times. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. song we will be taking up our offering um, there will be a basket that goes around uh, through the rows if you haven't come prepared to give or that, that's fine just let the basket pass you by and um, during the second song uh, Biff which is our primary school age group will be going out the back doors and turning left um, Emma should be stood at the back to kind of take you up so okay if you get to stand
Just got to waiting for the next slide. Are you okay there, Debbie? Thank you. Do you believe in God? Yes. Great. That's good to hear. 
Maybe you are like many people, though, who on finding I'm a Christian, say, I can't believe in God. A God who allows suffering and terrible things to happen in this world. I find the images I'm showing you of two doe orphan families back in 2009 obscene. That anybody would allow children to be in this state of malnutrition, dressed in raggy clothes, without shoes, parentless, and until do intervened, homeless. But it was not God who allowed this. It was man, through desire for power and greed, leading to war and corruption, who made this happen. We humans are made in the image of God. As a former marketing manager, I can tell you the children are not the brand image of God. Their malnutrition, rags and destitution is evil. The children are not evil, but what has been done to them is evil. God's love is so great for his creation the Bible tells us in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This love story continues today with many miracles taking place that show God's love for his people. The 193 do orphans, like the Adjic Susan family shown here, living with just fresh air for walls, could not have been in a weaker, more vulnerable position. Through the following photos, you will see God showing his love and power in the restoration and transformation of these young people's lives. So much has happened over the last 12 years in the lives of these orphans, the orphan families, that shows that God is demonstrating his love. At the start, 63 families, that's 193 orphans, were given their own family home and a means of self-sufficiency to keep them alive. Goats, chickens and land planted. Often, when I have spoken of the orphans, I say, this was bought, that was done, and that's very typical of me, reciting the completed to-do list. But when I got to the heart of what's been happening, it wasn't the generation game conveyor of stuff like bikes and solar power kits. It was knowing that they were loved that gave the 193 do orphans a sense of security in their lives and a hope for the future. We all, though, underestimated the power of greed. Now, strong and healthy, six of the orphans were lured by false promises or abducted by force by distant relatives or friends to be domestic slaves. But God delivered on his promise. I set my people free. All six were recovered to live in God's planned future. In the Acholi tribe, which is the tribe in northern Uganda, the mothers name their children in line with their circumstances. So in war, many orphans were given very negative names. As the lives of the do orphans transformed, so did their minds, rejecting the negativity imposed on them by their dead parents. As the Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Encouraged, many, many 
of the orphans have changed their name to a positive, strong name as a signpost to their better futures. I am her you <coughs> I am a human being again. When a moan child said those words to me, I have never felt more humbled. In the West, we probably don't realize what things can mean to people, but he felt valued and supported by everything that Do had done. Their lives turned around. The orphans knew that the God that they had cried out to in desperation had saved them. The orphans learnt that they could trust him and were happy to proclaim on the new homes that God is alive for all to see. John Calvin, our Ugandan colleague, who has helped turn the lives of the orphans round, said the next step was education. In fact, what he actually said was, the orphans will be ignorant peasants if we don't build a school to give them a good education. Broadway Primary School was built. As the ad goes, not just any old school, but one of excellent academic performance. For the do orphans, and for the surrounding community, a lasting legacy. 406 pupils, its capacity, attending pre-COVID-19. God created us to love music and dance and to run races. Broadway School delivers successful all-round pupils. As everywhere, COVID-19 has had an impact on Do's orphan education programme. In March of this year, 22 orphans with bright academic futures were attending top boarding schools in Kampala. The remaining 13 were still at Broadway School. Many of the other orphans were training in trade skills, either at vocational school itself or in post-vocational apprenticeships. And they were joining the 62 do orphans that have already been qualified in trade skills. And we always give the orphans tools so that they can utilize the skills they've uh, got to earn their living. And then of course we had COVID-19. All school and education institutions closed in Uganda as elsewhere. And they've remained closed to now. The only people that have been allowed back are the final exam year classes that went back in mid-October. But can you imagine, in a rural environment, without role models, and a very harsh lockdown curfew, and very harsh social distancing rules, this was a bitter blow for the orphans. And then it transpired that vocational schools very smartly changed their name to workshops and therefore could continue. So let's hear what Consi, who was in her first year at secondary at the beginning of this year, has to say. My name is Lanyar Konsi. I and our family would like to sincerely appreciate developing offerings of 10 years of generous support to us. I extend my thanks to our dear donors who are helping developing offerings to carry out all activities in Uganda. Without you, I could have not completed my primary school's education. I went for my secondary education, but due to coronavirus, which has disrupted the progress of schools, I decided to join vocational skills training. I pray that God will bless and protect you during this difficult time. 
all do primary and secondary orphans join vocational school. Once they've completed their courses, 111 of the 193 do orphans will have valuable trade skills to rebuild their communities' economies. Post-war, many skills were missing. We've already got one do orphan, thanks to God, who is a fully qualified nursery school teacher. This year, there are three trainee nurses God's plan is not just restoring the individual, but re the rebuilding of the two communities in which they live, Paddy Bay and Akobe, through 115 skilled do orphans. To keep 193 destitute orphans alive for all these years is God's miracle. Along the way, there have been health issues, especially endemic malaria. In a country where there are no fallback options of financial support, losing any physical gift would be hard in Uganda, particularly sight loss. Four orphans have been challenged. Without an NHS, we are thankful that God has shown mercy. Funding has enabled sightseeing trips to the skilled Indian eye doctors in India and Rwanda. But imagine John Calvin, who has never been abroad before taking a very seriously ill boy to India for eye treatment. Thank God he promises, the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. And I just thought, to remind us how valuable and to treasure our own NHS. Um, one man, post uh, the trip to India, asked John how much it cost for the eye operation. When John told him, the man said, it is better to die. The cost is out of the reach of the ordinary person in Uganda. From the beginning, Farming has been the means of survival for the orphans at home. Initially, subsistence farming. Then in order to protect their traditional lands from land grabs, farming needed to be at a commercial level. God lived up once again to his promise of being a strong defender of the fatherless when the land grabbers threatened. Two young farmer co-ops, Akobe and Paddy Bay, each with a tractor, equipment and secure storage shed, have been established to farm the land com commercially. And hopefully, if a lawyer doesn't get knocked down, we'll hear what she says. I'm too happy because my tractor is Anyway, it missed. So, there's been the big concern though, we're in Sub-Saharan Africa, that soil could be last, uh, lost rapidly if we continue very seriously with commercial farming as it stands. So, we've trained the orphans in farming's God's way. It's a methodology to retain the moisture and nutrients in the soil. I thank God that he answers prayers and the one prayer I've got for you to take away today is please pray that the farming God's way is put into practice successfully so that the soil and farming livelihoods are not lost. And now I'd like to invite the worship band to come back up and lead us in worship again. And then Helen will join us uh, to talk about what she's learnt as a trustee of God. Um, if you please stand. We're, we're going to sing a song. Uh, we're going to do Good, Good Father. Um, now, I don't normally do this, okay, but I think 
for, for the words of this song, it's very inward focused. However, I'd like to change it this morning to looking as a congregation, as a community. So every time it says I, I'd like to change that to we. Okay? And I don't do it often, so I'm not going to do it again. But this time around, I think that's what we need to do. Um, unless Debbie has super speed, it's probably not going to change on the words. But just remember, I to we. Okay? Thank you. in your eyes that that you just love us all equally no matter what Amen. and here we have Helen <coughs> right. okay. 
Right, sorry, this is not my normal environment. <laughs> um, so, as many of you will know, I was treasurer for, for three years of, of the charity, and um, I had the opportunity to head out to Uganda a couple of years ago. Um, and the verse that I want to sort of remind you of today is, um, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we were able to imagine, to him be glory. Um, and that's, yeah, I think definitely the, the verse for me. I think sort of um, God was able to do immeasurably more with me because anyone who knows me knows that um, bravery and spirit of adventure aren't really my character traits. So actually getting to Uganda was, was um, quite an a, achievement in itself. Um, but I think primarily today I just want to look at what um, was achieved with the finances of, of the charity. Um, uh, that I had the, the privilege of looking after. Um, and I think that's a good time for me to say, first of all, thank you so much to so many of you who have helped um, with the charity, whether it be um, giving regularly or giving as, as the Spirit has prompted you um, after there's been news about what's been, been happening in, in the country. Um, so we, we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for um, your faithful obedience in, in giving to the charity um, financially. And lots of people have given with time as well, but I suppose finances is primarily what I'm sort of looking at it at the moment. Um, when I went out, it was to, um, to look at, uh, just sort of confirming that, that the funds were being spent as, as they uh, were meant to, which is part of our obligation to the, the local regulator. Um, so I had the privilege of seeing, as Pat showed earlier, the school was built and then they built um, some teacher's accommodation as well. So that, that was great to see how the work or how the funds were being spent that, that you're given, but also that we've got a grant from the, uh, the local um, Isle of Man government as well. Ah, there we go. Um, we had many challenges um, at times, and one of the, the big challenges was, um, Pat showed you earlier about the, um, some of the houses that were built for the displaced families uh, when they uh, had the LRA uh, movement was going on. Um, and sadly then, more recently, there were um, was some land grabbed from the, the young families. And part of that was actually some of their homes were destroyed. Um, as you can see there, literally flattened, um, you know, completely uninhabitable. Um, and that was, was, a, was a big shock. And, and that was one of those things where we were thinking, gosh, this is a, is a big challenge. Um, but God provides, um, God provided the, the finances. Um, so we've been blessed with finances here. We also need to pay testimony today to the, to the young people themselves. Um, I think they're inspirational. Um, when I got to meet some of those families, um, their, their sort of drive and, and will to pr help provide their, their future. We often gave them money to get started, to get set up. But then I, I met people who were thinking, oh gosh, no, I'm going to change. Um, I don't think this, this pig is, is very, um, it, it's not a great sort of uh, one for breeding, so I'm going to change to a different one. And, and just that mindset that many of them had and how they were working hard to provide for themselves um, was a great, great encouragement. Um, so it was really devastating then when they, when they faced this. Um, so we had Livesey that had her home um, destroyed by the grab. Um, but we can hear from her in a moment. Um, to tell you a little bit more. My name is Lanyera Livasi. Thank you very much for educating and then training me. Thank you also very much for rebuilding our house which was destroyed. We are now very free in our new house and settled. Thank you so much. Um, you can see in the picture there on the right, actually, um, she's one of our young people that have gone through the vocational training of tailoring. So as well as the family um, working on the land and earning a living from there, she's also tailoring, so that gives her a, um, a, an additional income. Um, then another of our families um, we have here is um, Latibu, 
um, and they had um, difficult experience as well. So well, I'll let her, her speak on that. My name is Letebu Josephine. I want to thank you very much for what I am now. When I look at my past and what I am now, then I have a reason to smile. Thank you. So she's, she's thanking the, the, um, the, the charity and everyone for, for the help that she had. And that was something I found a little bit um, overwhelming and, and quite touching when we were um, out in Uganda. Um, you take these families who had had so little, but when we were there, they were bringing gifts to us to say thank you for what they had, had been given. So we, we would be coming home with um, pumpkins and chickens and goats and <laughs> all sorts of things like that. And that was just um, really touching, as I say, because of when you knew what they had been through, their, their gratitude was, was really quite overwhelming. Um, but um, I'm glad to say that with the land grab situation, um, we have a happy ending to that. Um, the, um, God has provided um, with the funds. These, I say these kids have worked very hard with their farming and um, it is paid off for them. And uh, they have been able to um, get full land title for their, their, their farms. So it means that they have um, protected their, their future. Um, which is, is a massive um, thing to be thankful for. So. And now I'd like to invite uh, Avril, who initiated uh, with myself and John Payne and the Easterns, uh, Childcare Kitsum, Kitgum Servants, which was the forerunner of Do Developing Orphans. We changed our name when we got the school. So here's Avril. So I'm just going to um, uh, read some verses from Psalm 103, and then we'll pray. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. We just pray. Lord, we come to bless you this morning for all that you are and all that you mean to us. Thank you, Lord, that we are privileged to be part of your great story. The story that reaches back to the beginning of time and is still being written. We bless you, Lord, that you are a God of love and that we were created for relationship with you. We praise you, Lord, that you've never given up on that purpose, even when we were rebellious and turned away from you. We praise you, Lord, for our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to show us what you are like and show us the way for a restored relationship with you. We bless you, Lord, that when we look at Jesus, we see who you are. We see love and compassion. We see justice and truth. So we bless you, Lord, for all you are, and that you show us how we can live our lives in the light of your truth. Thank you, Father, that in your love, our lives find meaning and purpose, and that we bring delight to you when we live our lives according to your truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came to establish the rule of the kingdom of God on earth and that you're still building your kingdom here. We praise you, Lord, 
for all that we've heard of this morning that you have accomplished through developing orphans, for lives rescued and restored, for children given a hope and a future. We pray for them and we pray for ourselves, Father, that you would continue to crown us with love and compassion and satisfy our desires with good things. Lord, we love you. Amen. We are blessed by a loving God, but the most wonderful thing is that he gives us blessings in terms of other people. John Calvin is our colleague and dear friend in Uganda. I thank God that he created such a man of compassion, integrity, intelligence. John has worked so hard overcoming many challenges to show God's love consistently to the orphans. In adversity, his sense of humour, laughter, has carried us through. As it says in Proverbs, a cheerful disposition is good for your health. And let's hear from John himself. Hi everyone, I just have a conviction to sing a very brief song that the Lord has put into my heart. God is good, God is good. He has done it all. Let our souls, let our souls rise and praise the Lord. The Lord is good, God is good. He has done it all. Let our souls, let our souls rise and praise the Lord. We are very, very grateful today uh, for what the Lord has done. And uh, when we see in the Word of God, in Psalms 126, verse 3, that the Lord has done great things, and indeed He has done a lot of great things. When I recall about uh, 12 years ago in 2008, when the servant of God came and prophesied to the child families, and the word that came from her mouth was that, the Lord has declared, and the Lord says he has great plans for these child-headed families. The plans to prosper them and not to harm them. The plans to give them hope and a future. We see it accomplished because we see these children now moving to become great people, great builders, great tailors, great mechanics great hairdressers, the, the word of the Lord has come to pass and we celebrate and thank God for it. He is real good. We stand in Psalms 126 verse 3 that he has really done great things for us. Amen. Running a voluntary charity needs wisdom and a wide variety of skills and especially in the onerous regulatory and legal framework for charities in the Isle of Man. And also with the ever-changing needs in Uganda as the do orphans get older. I thank God for blessing us with loving, dedicated trustees and accounts examiner. And publicly, I'd also like to thank my mum for giving me shelter and, and encouragement to keep going. Corporate governance trips are vital to ensure people in Uganda remain encouraged, but they are not for the faint-hearted. God, thankfully, has protected all these journeys so trustees and visitors can get back to their families safely. As Helen said, without long-term support, nothing can be done of substance in Uganda, as the needs have been massive. God has blessed us with encouragement, prayer and finance through many wonderful supporters 
and they, those supporters have been with us in the ups and downs of the orphans' lives. Fiona, a friend of mine, will recount how the last 10 years have seemed to her, and then Fiona will be followed by our trustee, Jane Hanley, to talk through her work in Uganda to alleviate poverty. So here's Fiona. Hi, I'm Fiona Shaw, and I live in Sydney, Australia. Uh, my friend Pat Wiles has asked if I'd like to contribute to the service for developing orphans. I feel quite honoured to be able to say a few words. It surprised me to look back at my files to see that it was in 2011 that Pat made contact, informing us that she was fundraising to get 29 child-headed orphan families, which was like 90 kids, to be self-sufficient after a terrible accident um, or incident in Uganda. Compared to the easy lifestyle that we are fortunate to enjoy in Australia, it's difficult to truly imagine the difficulties, the heartache and hardships of these Ugandan children. My heart went out to them. It's very inspiring to witness Pat's devotion, commitment and love of these children over the many years. My family and I are very pleased to contribute to the Do charity because we know how efficient the charity is run and we're very happy to play our small role. Over the years, to hear about the issues encountered from building, education, chickens, land grabs, puberty, drought and family relations, I found it fascinating and a, quite a reality check to assess what is really important in life. When I chat about my own kids, Pat will talk equally about these children as if they were her own. They are family to her. So keep up the good work and bye from Sydney, Australia. So here's Jane. Jane, what's going on with this? There's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide shaky legs. So, good morning. It is a privilege to be able to give thanks. Yeah, it is a, a great privilege and it's a great reminder for us all to be able to um, sit here this morning and see the chronology of what's happened and where we've got to today. So, um, as Pat said, I'm a trustee um, and on a governance trip in 2018, um, we observed that in Paddy Bay and the Okobi district, understanding and knowledge sharing in regard to sexual health and reproduction education barely existed, and I'll use the acronym SHARE moving forward, it's a bit of a mouthful. And as a result, teenage pregnancy, STIs, HIV incidents were really a very high risk. And this resulted in health implications for mum and for baby, and reduced potential to re-enter into education as well, which would meant you couldn't go on to earn a living, which was a great cause for concern, and obviously a source of cyclical poverty. And there was also a recognition there and from us that the male role in parenthood was very limited. And Broadway School itself had no teaching plan for sexual health and reproduction at all. So under an invite back in um, 2019, the following year, we returned to offer some training sessions to the Broadway teaching staff and other identified adults in the area. And this was to embrace and build on a holistic approach from the edu just purely education, um, for education and well-being for the young people and other adults involved. And obviously the program was named SHARE. Underpinning those trained, oh, I'm going to go through some slides in a moment because they're a bit out of order, so bear with me, just give you an overview. So underpinning those training sessions was the message identifying the importance of consistent teaching approach from an early age through to puberty before it got too late. And this was going to be delivered into the school curriculum for every school aged child at Broadway School. So with your help and the help of many others, we raised funds to build and develop a well-resourced separate resource centre, which was going to be a centre of excellence out in Uganda, based at the school, in which the teaching staff could locate, it was a go-to room for materials for those students. 
The offering of a, a separate building, as it were, a separate space, meant that the subject matter, which is likely to receive, be received best when, produce, when presented in a conducive, age-appropriate environment from knowledge of, knowledgeable staff is at its best, bearing in mind that there are very mixed groups in our schools, sort of the, you don't progress across the classroom from, from age, so you could have very young in with the older ones, so it was going to be a room, a resource area where they could go to separately. And this was going to be accessed by the community as well, so it was a resource room and ongoing training. Along with the centre, Funds were going to be used to develop mobile units, offering shared resources to enable those appropriately trained to deliver education and health promotion in the rural areas. As Pat's always already demonstrated to you, it's an extremely rural area, both Paddy Bay and Okobi. So a large population was going to be reached. So let's just see if we can. So that's just some of the community aspect of what we were doing. Um, we used lots of drama. Some of you remember the knitted dolls that you're all involved with that helped to explain the situation better than words could. I think we probably reached a, a good population of about 200. Is it this one here? Looking forward, about 250 children, young people, and adults. So that's across the Kobe, Paddy Bay, and into the vocational centre as well. And it was great to see the men taking part as well. And everybody that participated got a certificate to say that they knew what they'd done. So the, it was very basic, very basic resources that we had, but it had to be mobile. And when I say mobile, just carrying on a backpack on your back, no other way to get there, really. So that's the Share um, and Wellbeing Resource Centre before it was opened. Unfortunately, when we went in 2019, it wasn't quite finished, so we could, couldn't quite snip that, that ribbon there. But since then, it has been opened and, and used, and that's the inside of it there. So used by the community and this school. So I guess what we've seen is first-hand resources, if they're made available, give a really positive learning message and can reach far and wide. And it is essential for young people and the community to progress into a safer, healthier and more economically sustainable future. Access to the share, emotional health and well-being will change the future of these young people. And it already has done. And I think we're underpinning that by the Proverbs 16 verse 22, which says, understanding is a wellspring of life to those that have it. And of course, we couldn't also just, I mean, once you start on a holistic approach, it just widens and widens, and we had to be really careful to only focus on what our remit was. But whilst we were there, we recognised that the environment, as in all places, was just getting full and full of plastic. So we couldn't, um, we couldn't leave without, um, again, using that understanding as a wellspring of life to just begin to sort of explain some of the problems that plastic has to the environment. Um, because they'd never heard that message before, and there is no refuse collection. Plastic was absolutely everywhere, seeping into the, the soil and the crops and the water sources. So once they understood what, were the, what the problem was, and, and it was mobilised and funds provided for, for a, a truck to go along and um, a big pickup on the day. And it was probably tonnes and tonnes of plastic. It is just absolutely dreadful, dreadful to see. And hopefully that will be an ongoing thing that, that continues. Obviously, we would have gone back um, this year to, um, to follow up the, the work that we'd started, but we, the virus stop that. We would have hoped to go next year, but I don't think we're probably be going to get out next year either. So maybe in 2022 we'll go back and consolidate and see how they've got on and hopefully just word of mouth and using the resources that are available if they can get their hands back on them will continue to, to embed that message. So thank you everybody that um, really came on board in a very short amount of time. We raised that £10,000 in three months, I think, of going live with it. So thank you very much.
So the final speaker today is Marion, who will just take us through a whiz of what it's like to be a visitor in northern Uganda, to see what God's done there. But we will see that um, it is holistic and God's environment as well as God's people are so important. So here's Marion. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Well, I have to say the trip was amazing and hugely humbling and for me a big privilege to go. And I'm so thankful to Pat for the opportunity to go and to see the work of Do firsthand. I've been wanting to go out to Uganda for quite, well, for several years, but I always felt that if I went, I would want to do something. And God opened the door for me last year to do that. Pat is one amazing lady. Without her, do would not exist. Out of love and obedience to God's call, she has given real hope to a very vulnerable group of people. One of the things that Jeff and I so value, apart from the fact that God is the foundation of this charity, is that the kind of help do offers is equipping young people to be able to take care of themselves and their families, which positively impacts upon their community. It's clearly not easy, and there have been many setbacks, challenges, and frustrations. But as God's, as God so often does, he provides helpmates, and Pat has been blessed with a wonderful group of committed and hardworking trustees, as well as John Calvin, a wonderful man. It was an absolute blessing to meet John. He is an amazing man of God. He has an incredible capacity to love and to care for those around him. It was a joy to watch him engage and relate to the children and to the wider community. He is an amazing and fantastic translator for Jane with a gift of communication. He was able to connect with any audience, young or old, and he also saw the relevance of the SHARE training and helped to make the training real and relevant to the groups. So my part of going last year was really to support Jane. And you can see the pictures here of the various places that we taught or Jane taught. I just ran around in the background. But Jane is another incredible, phenomenal woman. Um, she, it, and it was such a privilege to be there to help her. At the start of 2019, Jane faced many challenges, not least doing her completing her master's and her dissertation. And in the middle of all that, she gathered the resources and put together the SHARE training, which was absolutely incredible and no mean feat. There's so much that I could share because it was an incredible trip lots of adventure. There's a little placard on the side there by the prayer ministry team says, which says danger, God at work. Well, boy, <laughs> he was. Um, but I'd like to just share two very quick stories uh, that really inspired and encouraged and, and touched me. Um, Jane had shared, as she has just now, that the previous year, um, how important it is for young girls to be allowed to finish their education even if they fall pregnant. Teenage pregnancy not only carries a stigma, but is a cause for perpetuating the poverty cycle. The first group we talked to um, were the Friends of Life who had received this teaching the year before. And Jane asked them how they had used it. And they had written a play. The Ugandans love stories, and it is the way that they communicate, but it was just amazing. And they performed it for us. And it was the story of a rebellious teenager who got pregnant. She told her mum, who was very upset, but the young girl managed to persuade her mum to help her to look after the child so that she could finish her education. And then she'd be able to provide not only for the child, but for her mum too. So the mum and the daughter go to the headmistress and persuade her that, uh, that to take the young girl back. And this is the last scene. Um, I need to just go back a bit. Uh, sorry. Yes, the last scene down there is um, 
the girl graduating. Um, and it was just amazing because they had taken the information and they had made it their own. And that was just incredibly encouraging for us. And the second half of the trip was the trip to Arcobi, um, which is really out in the bush. And when Pat showed those uh, pictures of poverty, I mean, it is really, really poor. There's nothing. Houses are just what, what there is, and it's, a, it's dirt floors. But it is very beautiful. And um, we had to walk to the village the, uh, the morning after we got there because our car had broken down en route the night before. And as we approached the village, there were three enormous and beautiful mango trees. Underneath them, some of the villagers were setting up for the training. People young and old arrived throughout the day. This was the most exciting thing that had happened recently, and of course there was free food. But it was an incredible experience. And Jane was describing fetal, fetal development, um, how a baby's made. And uh, I was going around with a flip chart showing um, how, uh, the show just showing the pictures of um, the development in the womb. And a small group of women held on to me. And they were older women, I guess they would be get grandmothers. And they clearly never seen the picture of a baby growing in the womb. And they were both in awe and fascinated. And there were some tears, tears of wonder, and from me too. It was a very special moment to realize that these precious ladies had no idea what happens inside their bodies. And it brought home the need for the share training. So that's do is a work of love in the broadest sense. God clearly uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And we thank God for you all today. And now back to Chris. Thank you. If you get to stand, I'll try and make it quick. You get light, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath.
seat for a moment. Thank you very much to, uh, to Pat and, and the team. I think it would be good to show our appreciation, not just for this morning, um, but for all of the work that goes on um, all year round through the work of Do Developing Orphans. So let's show our appreciation. said to Bill last week, whenever you've heard my name or seen me in a photo, remember that I am just representing God's love. It's about God. It's not about anything else. Thanks, Pat. Um, please do stay and join us afterwards for tea and coffee uh, through the doors at the, uh, the side there um, in the well. And if you would appreciate someone to pray for you, every week we have um, a prayer team uh, available at the front who are very happy to uh, to pray with you for anything that is on uh, your mind. Uh, tonight we have uh, Sunday Live uh, and we're starting a, a new series called Fruity Flavours at Sunday Live. So if you've never been uh, to Sunday Live yet, come along 7.30, uh, join us there. Let's, let's pray. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, to him be glory in Akobi, in Paddy Bay, in the work of Do Developing Orphans, here on the island and in our lives. And to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be all the honour. Amen. <laughs> 